With so much new PC hardware on the market, it can be tricky to know exactly what to buy. Well, in this video, I'm hopefully going to make things a bit easier by recommending the best CPU and GPU combos you can buy right now, with options at all price ranges, from the budget to the mid-range and high-end builds you can assemble. I'll be covering off why each of these CPUs and GPUs match with one another, and also providing alternative options for those looking to tweak things up and push things further. Let's do this. Let's start off by looking at the budget end of the market and work our way through. You can use the timestamps on the navigation bar to skip to your desired section or just watch the whole thing to see each get progressively a bit more expensive. Now for those looking at the best budget CPU and GPU combo, there can only really be one choice. AMD Radeon's RX 6600 and the Intel Core i3-12100F. The Core i3-12100F is the best budget CPU by a mile. With Intel's latest performance and efficiency cores, solid clock speeds, and support for the affordable H670 and B660 motherboard chipsets, it does a very good job. The included stock cooler will also do a nice job of cooling the CPU, saving you further cash. And AMD's RX 6600 and the 6600 XT variant are undisputably two of the best budget GPUs you can buy right now. You can find latest pricing and availability for this combo and every other combo we're going to talk about, link down in the description below. There are some other solid budget GPU options. Nvidia's last generation GTX 1660 Super basically gives you the same performance as a 3050 for less money, while AMD's RX 6650 XT, a card I'll touch on in just a moment, is also a very good shout. But what if you've got a bit more money to spend? What if you want to push the boat out a little bit and progress from 1080p medium settings to 1080p high settings with great frame rate? of well over 60 FPS in a wide variety of titles. Well, this is the combo you're going to want. Intel's Core i5-12400 or 12400F and the AMD RX 6650XT. Let's look at the CPU first. So the i5-12400 and 12400F are a fantastic choice on the 12th gen architecture. The only difference with the F and the non-F chip is that the F chip has no graphics installed. That's fine, as we'll be using the GPU, and you can save some money by picking up the F derivative. With six of Intel's performance cores and a further six of their efficiency cores, it's very solid for multi-threaded workloads. Intel's P cores and E cores are clever. Basically, the E cores will take all your background tasks, like the 300 Chrome tabs you should probably close, and it will deal with those in the background so that the faster performance cores can deal with gaming. You will see at a clock speed of up to 4.4 gigahertz, which is pretty quick. Obviously, with newer 13th gen chips, you can go further than that, up to 5 gigahertz and beyond. But for gaming, 4.4, completely fine. It's a low TDP, it supports the cheaper B660 and H670 motherboard chips sets too, and we've actually compiled a best roundup of all the great B660 motherboards you can buy in the card section here. If you're looking to go Team Red for the mid-range combo, I can highly recommend the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X as a solid second choice. With a boost clock speed on this of 4.6 GHz, it is a bit quicker, and it's also overclockable. You can overclock it on cheaper B550 motherboards, giving you a nice value add, but the chip itself is more expensive. You might be wondering, James, why not recommend the new Ryzen 5 7600X. It's a good CPU, but it's more expensive and it's out of the budget for this combo. You don't need a Ryzen 5 7600X or even one of the new Core i5 13th gen chips for the 6650 XT. The final thing you might be asking about this choice is why not a 3060? This is better. It's got better straight rasterization performance. But what if you've got a little bit more cash to spend? You want to go for something that's going to perform at 1080p, ultra, 100 FPS, or even 1440p? Well, this is where my next combo comes in. The RTX 3060 Ti and AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X or the Intel equivalent, the i5-13600K. The 3060 Ti is my favourite graphics card of the last two years. It performs nearly as well as a 3070 for less money. It provides top tier 1080p performance, like more 1080p performance than you could ever wish for, while also punching well above its weight at 1440p. You get 8GB of GDDR6 video memory and you can even buy cards like this Gigabyte unit, which are very small small, very affordable, and easy to fit in an existing build. I mean, I know it's an extreme example, but take the new 4090 from Nvidia. The 4080, by the way, is the same size. And look at the size difference. This one is way, way smaller. It's way thinner too, making it a more accessible bet. If you've got a build that you've already like put together that you'd like to upgrade, this makes complete sense. In terms of the CPUs, the Ryzen 5's 5600X is the more affordable option. But if you'd like to push things a bit further, you'd like to excel the frame rate, or even do a bit of 
of, I don't know, streaming in the background, then I can highly recommend the i5 13600K. It's got some of the best multi-threaded and single-threaded performance we've ever seen of any of the CPUs we've tested, and that's quite a lot of CPUs, and comes in at an affordable price point with motherboards that aren't too expensive either. Moving through into our high-end combos though, and we're starting things off with the RTX 3070, and once again, Intel's Core i5 13600K. You won't see any bottleneck in here, and the 3070 pushes things that bit further at 1440p than our previous combo, and also gives you a few legs at 4K. It's a great card for if you're doing some video editing. Applications like Premiere and DaVinci Resolve will eat up the video memory and the power of a graphics card like this, and with strong clock speeds, it works well. I don't need to repeat myself too much with the 13600K, it's the best gaming CPU you can buy right now for $300. Genuinely, there's not much more to say other than that. Even if you paired it up with a B660 non-overclocking motherboard, it's still better than the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, as the out-of-box clock speeds are just phenomenal. The 3070 though is a great card, AMD's equivalent, which is their 6750 XT, doesn't quite come close to this in terms of performance and all-round package, and as we get to the higher end of our combos, you'll notice Nvidia starts to win out that little bit more. But what if you've got, well, stupid money to spend, and you want to go, James, I want the best CPU and GPU combo that I can buy for around $1,500. Well, it comes in slightly overpriced, but Nvidia's new RTX 4080 has got to be your consideration. Pair it up with either an i5-13600K, or more preferably, the i7-13700K for slightly better performance, and you'll be incredibly pleased for playing any of the latest titles at 4K. 4K, high settings, DLSS3, ray tracing, it ticks every box. But it has got some competition coming. AMD's newly announced 7900 XT and XTX are worth keeping an eye on. Many people are touting these as the 4090 competitor, but because they both cost less than a 4080, at least the MSRP price points will have to see how that pans out with retailers and so on and so forth. In my mind, they're more of a competition to the 4080 than they are the 4090. For now though, the 4080 is a great bet. You get that more well-rounded NVIDIA package, fantastic straight rasterization performance. It is going to cost you quite a lot of money, but at around double the performance of what you'd find from a 3080, and about triple in many cases what you'd find from a 3070, I can absolutely recommend this as a high-end option. Of course, if you wanted to go really, really high-end, what's the best CPU and GPU combo I can buy right now? i9-13900K RTX 4090. That is just the best of the best right now, and I don't think even AMD's new GPU announcement is going to save that. You might also be asking a few questions in your head. James, you've not really recommended any of the new Ryzen 7000 processors. Is that because you haven't got any or you just hate AMD or what's going on? In short, they're very good. The new AMD 7000 series are solid for CPUs, but currently DDR5 RAM is too expensive, but the primary option is that the new X670E motherboards and even the cheaper B650 and B650E designs are plainly extortionate. That's not the fault of the board manufacturers necessarily, it's more the components that are involved in the architecture, but Intel are plainly a better bet at a better price point for the high end. I'm sure we may see this change with AMD's next gen of CPUs. Remember, Ryzen 7000 is the first of that new AMD architecture and things will only get cheaper. But for now, AMD are going to take a bit of an L from me on this one. Not that they're probably too bothered because they'll probably sell a few Ryzen 7000 CPUs anyway. You can find links to all the best CPU and GPU combos down below and also read our articles on the website with the best B6 60, Z790, Z690, and B550 motherboards you can currently buy. If you're going for one of these combos and want some other nice hardware to go along with it, I can highly recommend our website, geekort.com, as a place where you can read all of that advice. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Woohoo! Oh, shit.